All right, guys, I'm, I'm just going to do a reading today. The Lord been talking to me about doing some readings, just of certain scripture or chapters. Also, amongst the other things he's been having me um, start releasing videos on and stuff, and I will be making voice recordings on Spreaker with, um, on the, doing these readings every day. But I can't do it at the same time, of course, as I'm making the video because I can't run both apps. So I will do the voice recording after this on my Spreaker channel. Thank you guys who listen to my live speaker channel. Um, it's funny that I feel so led to do that because it turns out, um, you know, over the past two years, I found out that not only did my great uncle Woodrow and um, my great uncle Harold both were radio personalities on the old radios back in the day when, you know, they'd have to tune in at night and they'd listen to the radio show and they'd be doing all the crazy sound effects and stuff. Um, so they were radio personalities, but um, my dad was also a radio personality I knew on um, on um, shortwave radio, ham radio, and everybody loved my dad. And my granddaddy was, of course, a personality on the uh, maritime radio, you know, because he was always out on his boat after he retired. And um, so the speaker channel is not a surprise. After I learned all that, I knew that God was talking to me about it. So uh, the, it started with the videos, of course, and all the ministry stuff, and then he had me start doing the Spreaker Live. So um, let me read this. I opened up my Bible Gateway app, and it was from Matthew 19, and each day he's been talking to me about this, that he wants me to start allowing him to give me things to read again like we used to do daily. Not a prophetic word, just a daily reading. No, a scripture that maybe, you know, that... Uh, something that really is impressed upon me or something and just read it, period. Not anything else with it. Uh, and I thought that Sister Jackie said it perfect today, actually, um, in one of her reposts. And I remember her saying it because I was always trying to find a way to explain it. That when people have what they call prophetic words every day or whatever, that that's more like witchcraft. That's witchcraft. That's sorcery. It's like a horoscope, a daily horoscope. You don't get a prophetic word from God every day. Um, especially for like single people, you know, like single people getting, you know, who they say, somebody has a word for them every day. It's like a, a talisman or something, you know, or a, a horoscope. It's daily sorcery. That's all it is. It's not real. So, um, I hope this isn't too loud in the background. It kind of went on to one of their songs. That's just a little louder than I can you know, that I really wanted, I would really prefer something a little bit more quiet in the background without all the extra. I know I'm extra. You can make your comments. I know I'm extra. Four. What, babe? One, 114, Psalm 114. Oh, so today, uh, Lily, let me see the feathers. Let me see the feathers. So, you know, yesterday was really rough. And we've been um, really hearing from God that we're not supposed to go do that genetics testing and stuff. And we, we our car broke down and uh, like three times we got stuck. <laughs> you can say hi. Hi. <laughs> my so today my mom found superhero. some really big feathers in the grass today. And we know that and these the are the biggest feathers. ones yet. But we know that God, you know, keeps showing us time and time again, even when the medical transportation van broke down the same way our car broke down when we were trying to go to this. And it happened right after, like we didn't even get out of Philly. And so God has really been resonating that with me. And so we prayed over that. We cast everything down, any sorcery, witchcraft over her blood and the genetics and stuff. Because, you know, they're always trying to play God. That's why they want to do all this stuff with all the genetics and the chromosomes and the cloning and blah, 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 right? And the mRNA, I don't want to say, because I know that I'll get, I'll get censored. I can't say anything else. I just gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. So let's move on. God says in Psalms 91, He will cover us with His feathers, and under His wings we can take refuge. And we pray it all the time. And lately, I've been praying it heavily. And every time we start praying it, boom, <coughs> feathers everywhere white feathers these are the biggest ones yet we thank you father you are our strong tower you shelter us <clears throat> Matthew 19 now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judah beyond the Jordan and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. 
The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife just for any reason? And he answered, I think it was 19.5 or something that was in the daily thing. So I'm just kind of, I just kind of opened it up and started the video. So let's see what's, I don't know what, if he's going to talk to you, if he's going to talk to me. I'm just reading what he wants me to read. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him and saying to him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made the male and female. <gasps> and, you know, they want people to say gender, not sex. We are humans. We are homonyms. Our genetic code has causes us to have either male or female sex chromosomes. All right? We are not a gender. We're not inanimate objects. Stop being politically correct and be biblically correct. Male or female. You're not confused. You're not in the wrong body. You're not the wrong gender. You're, the, the sex you are born into is the sex you are supposed to be, and you are supposed to marry the opposite. And only one. And be absolutely monogamous. Not even thinking about anyone else. So... That's a word, too. So stop being confused. You either have a penis or a vagina. You're a male or female. With male and female sex chromosomes. Either uh, X chromosomes or, y, or an XY. Yeah. So, grow up. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male or female? and female and said for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined with, to his wife and the two shall become one flesh so then they are no longer two but one flesh therefore what God has joined together let not man separate so no you don't get to have your own life if you're married no no bros before hoes your wife is your mate your helpmate your husband is the head of the household. If he's not following God, you don't have to follow him, but you're supposed to submit yourself as long as he's walking godly path. He makes the final decision. If he's acting like a dummy, then no. Follow Jesus only. But if your wife is, you know, doing things that she shouldn't be doing and stuff, of course, you need to handle that in a proper way. And, and use a godly, godly correction need to be reading the word over your family and speaking the word over your family every day. Stop being a little wuss and be a, a real man in God. And there's too much of it. And these women out there, they think that they have to run around dressed like a bunch of hoes. I'm so sick of it. Grow up. Put some clothes on. You know? This is so stupid out here today. The men don't know what they are. The women don't know what they are. They think they're the other thing. And if they don't, they're so lust-filled, they can't even focus for a few minutes on something godly or their own family. They're, they're so distracted by the crap in the world, the lust of the world. It's really pathetic. I don't even like people around me because I'm so tired of it. And y'all already know because I talk about this all the time. It's disgusting. It makes me want to shower with bleach every time I leave the house or turn on even the TV. Because even the stuff that they put on, the, the, the holding screen... It's just so that I don't even want Lily to see the thumbnail of, much less me. I don't want it going in my eye gates. I think it's disgusting. People are so distracted, they can't even enjoy worship music. There's, if there's something just a little bit distracting on it, somebody makes a video that has somebody a little too pretty or a little too handsome or has a little bit of too much of their strong, brawny chest showing or, or their figure showing, People can't even focus on it. That's how distracted people are. On the clothing, the jewelry. It's so pathetic. The cars, the people, you can't even... It's so disgusting to me. You can't even focus on your family. And God is trying to heal the, the family and the foundation of the family. And nobody wants it. You want to live your own single secret life. Go ahead then. Because <laughs> that's, that's exactly what has torn our, apart, our families apart. And the people that are striving to try to get it right are still going the wrong way. They think that they still have to do these other things to get attention, to feel better. I mean, it's all so twisted now, guys. Come on. We got to join together. Our little group here, our little ecclesia on this little channel. It's like 
it's like the only thing I've seen left. And I hope you guys aren't backsliding out there because it's we're like the the only ones I, I feel safe in our little family. You know, there's so many people that are so fake. Wolves in sheep's clothing. <sighs> so they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce to put her away? He said to them, Moses... Uh, because uh, of the hardness of your hearts permitted you to divorce your wives but from the beginning it was not so and that's reality even uh, you know like the Lord never let me go through with any of the marriages that I, I had attempted you know thought that were supposed to be or whatever you know if somebody said you know like this one guy that I was engaged to it was like I knew it wasn't right I'm like maybe I'm supposed to like aren't I supposed to be married I'm so glad it never happened. Thank God I burned the dress. You know, I was like, no, not doing this. Thank God. And even my husband's divorce thing that happened when he was 18, it was like a, a shotgun wedding. He just turned 18. She was still 17. And then within a few months, they divorced. It literally doesn't even exist. They destroyed the records of it because it was like that fast. And they, were, they didn't see any point to having them on the microfiche with billions of other microfiche of real marriages and divorces, right? So God has cleaned the slate because he expects one marriage between a man and a woman. And it's and believe me, he will make sure you have your rib, men and ladies. You will have your Adam, the one you're made from the rib from. You got to stop running around like idiots, jumping from one bed to the other, running around dressed like a bunch of prostitutes. That's not how you find your Adam. And guys, you got to stop having your head on a swivel like a bunch of idiots. No wonder women can't trust you. I love our little group here on this channel. I'm so thankful for the true men and women of God, that tiny little number. And, you know, I know that those Jehovah's Witnesses, that cult, you know, they try to say it's only exactly 144,000 people. Oh, really? Because <laughs> there's way more than 144,000 people in their cult. So, um, anyway, but it is... It's like an analogy. It's a, it's synonymous. It is a very small number of true followers of Christ that are in that 144,000 that get snatched up. And I pray and hope and lament that I'm one of them. God, please let me be one of them. Okay. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. Did you know you commit adultery every time you have a lustful thought about someone else when you're married? It says it in the Bible. If you don't know it, read your Bible. If you call yourself a Christian. His disciples said to him, If such as it is the case of the man with his wife, it is better not to marry. I can't believe this was it. You know how you want to see the proof? Look, open up the BibleGateway.com website and you'll see that this is the scripture verse. And I just opened up to what God told me to read. So there's a lot of people getting chastened in judgment right now. And I know it because as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, uh, and, and what it says in, in uh, 2 Timothy about the selfish generation, immoral, selfish generation, and narcissistic generation of men. <laughs> For sure, I'm telling you, it's pathetic out there, and uh, it's only getting worse, but God is coming. He's coming to rescue us. He's coming to rescue us. Today is July 23rd. 23! Did you know tonight is the full moon right after we saw that blood waxing crescent and the blood sun and the big crazy orange moon stuff and everybody else mentioning hey we saw it too i was the first one who saw the blood sign i was the first one my tiny prophetess she's more than a tiny superhero y'all already know in my fact baby. we were all the first ones bye i love her i know i know everybody it loves lily all right let me put my glasses back on let's keep reading uh okay his disciples said to him, If such is the case of the man with his wife, it is better not to marry. But he said to them, All cannot accept this saying, but only those whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs 
who were born thus from their mother's womb. Eunuchs are the ones that are, you know, they have their, okay, they, they are asexual like angels, right? They have no sexual organs. They've been removed. They are purposely castrated to be able to protect the queens and stuff. And so that they won't rape them or try to like, you know, run off with them like, you know, Romeo and Juliet thing. So they don't have any sexual tendencies. Therefore, they can't be tempted and they can protect the queen. That's what a eunuch is. And they are asexual. It's like an angel. And the and I lived an asexual lifestyle. Shh, quiet. I lived an asexual lifestyle for five years there. And that is a real word. If you look it up, you can Google it yourself. Um, here, put your feathers up, please, lovey. Lily, come put your feathers up. Um, um, it means you know, either one, like an angel or a eunuch or something, not having any sexual organs and stuff, just very, you know, and, and holy, right? Or not thinking about, not joking about, having absolutely nothing to do with anything of the sexual persuasion, living, abstaining completely, even from joking about it or anything like that. Of course, with the exception of the fact that I had to minister to people about it, but that's obviously clearly different. Hey, guys. All right, love you, shush. Okay, let's see. So the eunuchs, you understand what a eunuch is? Let's go on. For there are eunuchs who were born thus from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made uh, eunuchs by men. I was just talking about them the other day. That's so weird this is in here. And there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. That's what I did. I was basically like I eunuched myself, but a female. So I was abstaining like a... You know, I don't know what we'd call it. I guess a nun in the religious faith or something. He who is able to accept it, let him accept it. Then the little children were brought to him uh, that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Oh, here's the scripture that's the daily one. This is the verse that was in there from 914. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. Do you know what this makes me think, Lily Annabelle Slipko? That God is answering our prayers because Jesus is talking about laying his hands on the little children and healing them. And here we just went there yesterday out of disobedience, thinking that we were doing the right thing, right? And then it might have been the enemy, but it was God. And here I just prayed that this morning and opened up and I didn't even catch that. He's responding. He's making sure that Lily's blood is protected. We declared the blood of Jesus in those test tubes and, and flowing through her veins and in those test tubes that they took out of her body. And we declared any assignments null and void and all of that, right? And here, this is right here. This is our confirmation, Lily and Dad. Come on now, out here. We don't do distraction when we're doing this. Now, come on, I'm trying to show you something here. God is answering everything we prayed over your blood from yesterday. Isn't that amazing? Listen close. I'm going to read it again. Then little children were brought to him and that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked him. But then Jesus said, are you listening? Yes. Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands, Jesus laid his hands on them and departed from there. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments he said to him which ones jesus said you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness honor your father and your mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself see the commandments are not dead y'all who are lost in that false doctrine that says that the commandments don't exist anymore not we're not under the law you might not be under that law from the back of the day where you have to sacrifice an animal but you're, you are under God's law that you still can't do these things because you will go to hell. You are committing sin and without the Holy Spirit and a true repentive heart. If you're not truly repenting, 
You're going to hell. I don't care about the ace up your sleeve. So God has to give you the gift of a repentant heart. We're not born with it. You have to ask for it and pray for it. No one can help you with that. That's your own choice. So the young man, and it's also in the Beatitudes, remember. So no matter which way you go about it, yes, you still have to abide by the commands of the Lord. All these things, the young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to go to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Take up your crosses daily. Deny the flesh, kill the flesh, deny all flesh and lustful flesh and anything that's the, the you know, instant gratification, those things that just give you that instant, right? Deny it, run from it, take up your cross daily. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is um, harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven because they think they have everything. They think they don't need God, you know? Uh, and again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. I remember getting that scripture uh, in a dream when I was first saved. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, uh, with men, this is impossible, but with, but with God, all things are possible. That's my favorite. Then hang on a second. All right. Then Peter said um, to him, see, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you have you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones at judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Hallelujah. This is perfect. But many who are first will be last and the last first. I know who I need to send this to. This is powerful. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Thanks for joining, guys. God bless.